welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. On October the 14th, 2025, support for all standard versions of Windows 10 comes to an end. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly how things now stand based on the latest information. And I'll then outline 10 possible options for computers that cannot officially move to Windows 11. So, let's go and get started. As I've just noted, on October the 14th, 2025, Windows 10 reaches end of support. This means that Microsoft will no longer provide free software updates or security fixes. After support ends, PCs running Windows 10 will still work just fine. But they will be increasingly less secure and Microsoft recommends moving to Windows 11. The problem is, a large number of computers currently running Windows 10 do not have the option of moving to Windows 11, or at least not in a manner supported by Microsoft and using an automatic upgrade process. This is due to Windows 11 requiring a processor that Microsoft deems compatible, as well as other prerequisites such as TPM 2.0 security hardware. In December 2024, Tech Power Up and some other websites reported that Microsoft had loosened Windows 10 install requirements, with TPM 2.0 not needed anymore. However, this was not true. Rather, Microsoft had just updated this page about using workarounds to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. This continued to state that installing Windows 11 on a device that doesn't meet Windows 11 minimum system requirements isn't recommended. And on December 12, 2024, Microsoft added this further update to confirm the article was originally published on October 4, 2021, and that Windows 11 minimum system requirements remain unchanged. So, all that happened in December 2024 is that Tech Power Up and others distributed clickbait. Microsoft has not revealed how many computers are still running Windows 10, so we have to rely on third-party data. For example, according to StatCounter, in May 2025, about 53% of Windows PCs were running Windows 10 and 43% Windows 11. And if we scroll down for this chart, we can see that whilst the gap has been decreasing, the lines have now ceased to converge. StatCounter's figures are based on tracking data from over 1.5 million websites. Even so, they may overestimate the number of Windows 10 users. This said, even if the data is significantly inaccurate, it does suggest that a large percentage of computers are still running Windows 10, probably equating to several hundred million desktop PCs and laptops. And Microsoft's recommendation is that all of these should be sent to landfill by October the 14th. If you have a computer running Windows 10 but does not meet the requirements for Windows 11, and you want to keep using it, there are at least 10 possible options. These generally involve mitigation, migration, or adopting a hybrid strategy with the best option depending on what you use your Windows 10 computer for and whether you're prepared to spend any money. So, let's consider each option in turn. Firstly, you could decide to do nothing, which is easy but which will make your computer increasingly less secure. Some people believe that they can compensate for a lack of security updates by running good antivirus and anti-malware software. However, whilst these detect viruses and other malware and prevent them from running, they do not patch flaws that are discovered in an operating system after its release. Rather, this is what Windows security updates are for. So, if you choose to do nothing, you will be taking a risk. And this is probably only sensible if your computer is never used for online banking, online shopping and similar activities. Secondly, you could choose to run Windows 10 offline. This would be secure, but is likely to be impractical unless you have another computer that you can use to access the internet. 
Thirdly, you could buy extended security updates or ESUs from Microsoft. Since November 2024, businesses have been able to purchase these for $61 for the first year, $122 for year two, and $244 for year three. And ESUs are free with virtual Windows 10 PCs purchased via Windows 365 or similar subscriptions. Microsoft is also making ESUs available for educational and home users. For those with an educational Windows 10 license, ESUs have also been available since November 2024 and cost $1 in year one, $2 in year two, and $4 in year three. However, for individual Windows 10 Pro or Windows 10 Home users, ESUs will cost $30 for one year only, with no option to extend beyond 12 months. It seems that Microsoft last updated information on ESUs on May 21, 2025, with the wording for individual users being very telling. The phrase, if you need more time before moving to a Copilot Plus PC or other new Windows 10 device, makes it pretty explicit that Microsoft is using the end of support for Windows 10 to try to get us to buy new hardware. And I personally take the initial mention of Copilot Plus PCs to indicate that Microsoft sees these as the future, with Windows 12 likely to require an MPU. I also find it shocking that we still don't know when or how we'll be able to purchase individual ESUs. Although I guess releasing these details would not improve this chart. And I strongly suspect that ESUs will only be available to Windows 10 computers that are logged in to a Microsoft account. Moving on, another mitigation option is to purchase third-party security patches. These were available from companies, including Across Security, who claim that their zero patch service will provide critical security patches for Windows 10 for at least five more years. However, there may be some risk relying on Windows security patches that don't come from Microsoft. A final potential option for retaining a secure version of Windows 10 is to migrate to a Windows 10 Enterprise Edition from a long-term servicing channel or LTSC. Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC was created for special use devices, such as medical scanners that require long-term support. Four editions have been released, and of these, Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 2019 has support and will therefore receive security updates until January the 9th, 2029. Note that migrating to Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC would require a reinstall and that there may be issues with newer hardware and software support. You would also need to purchase an activation key and to find a way to download the ISO file, which is officially only available to businesses with a Microsoft Volume Licensing account. Our next option is an unofficial upgrade to Windows 11. I've shown how to achieve this in several videos, and a clean install of Windows 11 on unsupported hardware should work on any PC or laptop with a 64-bit processor and at least 4 gigabytes of RAM. Unsupported Windows 11 installations currently receive security updates, but not feature updates or updates to the next version. So, if you choose to install the current version of Windows 11, which is 24H2, on unsupported hardware, it will reach end of support on October the 13th, 2026. To continue to receive security updates, you would then have to upgrade to Windows 11 25H2. This should be released in September or October 2025, and is likely to have two years of support. This means if you're thinking of doing an unofficial Windows 11 install, it may be worth waiting until 25H2 is released. Back on our table, another option is to fully migrate to a Linux-based operating system. This may be a popular Linux distribution, such as Ubuntu, Linux Mint, or Zorin OS, but it's easy to set up on most computers without having to resort to the terminal. And I've detailed the process in many videos, including Switching to Linux, a Beginner's Guide. 
Zorin OS also sent out a recent release about using their operating system as a replacement when Windows 10 reaches end of life. And this highlights the irony of millions of computers being subject to planned obsolescence on October the 14th, which is International E-Waste Day. Another Linux alternative is a Chromium-based operating system such as Chrome OS Flex or Fido OS. Either of these can be used to give many older computers the same operating system as a Chromebook. However, the big downside of migrating to any kind of Linux-based operating system is that the computer will no longer be able to directly run Windows applications such as Microsoft Office or Photoshop. And this brings us to three hybrid options where Windows 10 is maintained in some form. One hybrid solution is to set up a dual boot with Linux and an offline install of Windows 10. This would allow you to select either Linux or Windows on boot, so providing access to your existing Windows application securely offline with Linux available for online activities. And I've detailed how to set up a dual or single drive dual boot in another video, which I'll list in the video description. A second hybrid option is to migrate to Linux, but to set up an offline Windows 10 virtual machine so you can still use your Windows software in a secure environment. And once again, I've covered how to do this in another video. The advantage of running Windows in a virtual machine is flexibility, as you can work in Linux and Windows simultaneously. However, unlike with a dual boot, Windows can never access all of your computer's processing, memory, and other hardware resources. So, a dual boot is better for gaming or running applications like video editors. As a final hybrid strategy, you could continue to run Windows 10, but with a Linux virtual machine that you use for all web browsing, email, and other online activities. And whilst this would not be entirely secure, it should be safer than continuing to go online in Windows 10 after it stops receiving security updates. After October the 14th, 2025, computers running Windows 10 will continue to work perfectly well, with many people completely unaware that anything has changed. And just as some people choose to travel in a vehicle without wearing a seatbelt and never have any accidents, so I'm sure there'll be many people who continue to use Windows 10 without security updates and never have a problem. However, those with a less cavalier attitude to risk will want to take a more cautious approach. And in that context, I hope you found this video useful if you want to continue to use, in a secure manner, a Windows 10 computer that does not officially support Windows 11. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.